Hello everyone, welcome back to another session with me. This is Sayukta Saxena and this is the new series, brand new series, Whiteouts, Entangled Whiteouts, wherein we are trying some interesting string ideas where we are leaving certain portions of the tile absolutely white. And you can see how the white portion stands out as you tangle around it, right? So let's get started with today's session and today I'm going to try something, uh, another new idea basically. Yeah? So till now we have tried an alphabet, we have tried a shape, the rectangle shape. Today let us try white out uh, with a tangle, right? So what I'm going to do is use my pencil and draw a tangle called Hollis, right? But I'm going to use my pencil and draw some thick Hollis. Right, so Hollis, it's not necessary that you have to draw it uh, just like Mooka or thin lines. You can also draw it in this fashion, right? So I'm drawing some quite thick lines and drawing it with my pencil and creating the tangle Hollis. Right, so you can see the lines are thick like this. One more and it comes down right till here and you can also add one here like this. Yeah, so that's our string for today. So what we are going to do is leave this space as it is and then tangle all inside. And let's see what happens, right? So what we are going to do is, we have drawn it with a pencil because we don't want the lines to be very evident or very discreet here, right? So it should look seamless. For example, in this one I have inked the lines. However, in this S is not inked. So somehow it got its border due to the tangle surrounding it. And we intend to do the same thing here also. Right? So unless we draw a tangle which needs an outer aura, so that's a different thing altogether. Right? So let's get started and I'm going to start with a nice flux here. Why? Because the shape is such. Right? So you don't have to think too much why, what, where. Again I'm going to insert a nice flux here. So if you can think of some other tangle, please go ahead with it, no problem at all. Again, I'm going to add some moon here, right? So slowly take your time. Think of tangles that will fit in well in these spaces without much of tampering, yeah? <laughs> Although you can create tangliations. So this is a very basic tangle, crescent moon. I'm first adding the moons. Right. So just take your time, slowly add as many moons as you feel like. Big, small, no hard and fast rules here. Right, so added one here also. Now let us add the auras. So slowly start to add auras. Make sure you don't enter the hollis. Right, so that's the only thing that you have to be careful about. The Hollis that you have drawn with your pencil. There should not be any blacks inside it. It has to be a white out. Yeah. So take your time. Keep rotating your tile. Add an aura to each. Slowly, patiently. One aura to each. Crescent moon as in tangle original, a purely aura based tangle where you aura, aura each of the moons simultaneously, right? 
that's it no more space there yeah so we are done with our crescent moon now let us extend it a little more this space again I'm going to add one nice flux right now let us grow our tangles so I'm going to extend the moon on the other side also so drawing many tangles together although it's not a very good idea to choose more than two or through two or three tangles uh, in a tile because you I, I feel particularly you can't really do justice with all but when you do uh, create a tangle jungle wherein you try different tangles together transitioning from one tangle to the other is a interesting thing to look at yeah so it really helps you practice that thing so drawn a henna drum here now you can closely all right right now you have these nice beautiful spaces here so up to you what do you want to add right so let's see uh, this space probably I'm just going to add a nice gorgeous yeah so just picking spaces at random it has a nice curve so I don't have to make much effort to put in my gorgeous there that's the whole idea that's the only thought process behind it yeah Again, you can add one more aura since there are spaces there. Right? So, inking the next thing and gorgeous, always a good idea. However, you can add orbs, you can add different tangles inside each of these sections. So, do as you feel like at this point of time. I'm going with thinking that's one again leave a gap go to the next so it's just alternate thin and thick auras with thicker auras inked or you can add a tangle inside tangle pattern gorgeous looks just like the gourd going to the third one yeah so I am done inking my gorgeous this section I am just adding some lines adding some orbs just like we do for the tangle on a mat you can add double lines add some orbs fill in the in between intersectuses or you can add some more orbs there spaces are tiny so take your time Yeah. so that's on a mato you can add that at a few more places also for example here right so I'm just going to insert an orb insert one more totally orb based tangle no other stroke except the orbs bigger orbs smaller orbs
take your time slowly draw this tangle now don't forget to fill up these small intersectuses adds a lot to the look of the tangle Yeah. So done with my anomato. These lines also are generally filled with orbs only, but we'll see if we want to do that or we want to highlight it, leave it the way it is. Yeah. So moving on to the next section. So we have this section here. So let us add a tangle called Senna here. Right. So I'm just going to start with lines with some weight at the end. Give a little push to my nib as I start the line. Give a nice curl and start drawing these lines. This is the tangle Senna, a totally aura based tangle. Right, so I have drawn a few lines in that direction. Now I am going to start here. So simple lines with a slight curve and a slight weight at the end. Drawing a V at the end and inking it in. Pressing my nib a little bit as I start the line to add a little dimension. So the lines also talk. Yeah. So a lot depends on your pen pressure also. Even the lines start to breathe depending on how do you draw them. Right? So just drawing lines, take your time. I'm just going to curl it here. So there is no set way to draw Senna. Practically you cannot replicate it. Just draw lines in the directions you wish to. Make sure you don't enter the Hollis. Yeah, that's one part. So I'm going to continue drawing my Senna. Again, started with the lines, added a little weight as I end. Right, so you can. Draw it the way you want. Maneuver the lines the way you want. There is no fixed way to draw your Senna. You can draw the lines in any direction that you want. Make sure you don't enter your Hollis. A little pen pressure as you start the line would be a good idea. that's about it you can always extend this a little more up yeah so that's our Senna now let us move to this side so let us see what do we want to add again you have a nice space here I'm again going to add one more henna drum there it's 
some etching and a close outline and our drums yeah so you have some small space here so what do you want to add here let's see probably some nectar again pure line work drawing four lines again changing the direction of the lines drawing four more again changing the direction of the lines drawing four more so just keep doing that again change the direction of the line yeah some bit of inking there pure line work again tangle nectar take your time find those angles from where you can start the lines that's the only thing here nothing else yeah so now this section is left right we are done with our nectar i'm just going to draw simple curls just like we draw for banzo but i'm not going to ink all of them probably will ink few we will leave the rest as they are yeah so this is the banzo grid or banzo this is how we draw banzo but we generally ink banzo but i don't think i'm going to ink all but i'm definitely going to ink a few right so take your time and slowly draw these curls just the way you draw for banzo so word banzo is a very versatile tangle and you can see it looks so different arranged this way yeah So if you want you can add something else also in between but I think I'm going to go with this only squeezing them closely together yeah take your time and do that exercise out yeah so once we are done with that I'm going to ink a few right so just randomly pick few of the manzos and ink them But you need not do that for all you want some drama so we are going to ink a few so take your time pick pairs of C shape leave a highlight and ink the rest like this Yeah. So 
so you can do it at your own pace I'm going to continue like this ink a few take your time and do that exercise for few yeah so I'm done with drawing my bunzo here yeah so let us now move on to shading and we shall see what else do we want to do probably add an additional orb inside here small little spaces make sure you fill it up so that the outline is nicely defined yeah again you can add a print term here that's it let us first shade and then we shall see if we want to do something else yeah small little turn there so inside this hollis this pencil line also you can do away with or alternatively you can ink it if you want It would look nice anyways. Right? So let's get started. Let's start to shade. So what I'm going to do is just add graphite on the outside first and then under the line here under the line here under the line here Just blend, don't blend too much, leave the center white. Again, we have a lot of overlaps here, so highlight them. Take your time, slowly add wherever there are overlaps. Yeah, so let us slowly blend. Make sure your ink has dried up. The very soft hand. Just blend the graphite. Yeah, coming to the moons. So 
just a soft touch make sure you have the whites visible going to our gorgeous just the bottom nothing on the ink sections on the flux flux on one side under the onomato lines on this line as far as the henna drums are concerned take your time slowly blend Just highlighting the ends here where we have already added weights highlighting that a little more and a little intersection here so That's it. Right, so let us move and add our chalk. So I'm going to just redo the highlights on my bunzo. You may or may not do that. can always add highlights here again that's optional because you have shaded it that way that the center is highlighted if you want you can the center of your present moon the upper part of your gorgeous So some on the center of the nectar. So wherever you have not added graphite, you can always give a little highlight with your chalk. Yeah. So you can either add a highlight on your onomato or you can add some shading below also. So it is entirely up to you. So these are thick ones, so I'm adding some shading below. I think we don't need any more highlights here. A little on the center. That's about it. Right? So that's our tile for today. Again, how you can use tangles for whiteouts. Right? So try doing it with different angles, try it with hollow bog, just don't ink the hollow bog lines, try not inking the hollow bog lines and then drawing tangles around it and you will see a totally different effect, something like this, the white out effect. 
yeah maybe you don't need to ink this line also but uh, I thought I would do it that's why I did that but you may may not ink it yeah so that's our tile for today small little things that you can do re-emphasize some of the lines they will add to the look yeah yeah that's about it let's close our tile here so the tangles that we use today the white out tangle in which I have not actually tangled inside is Hollis right and this tangle inside is crescent moon these are all the tangle originals this tangle on both sides is called onomato this tangle is bunzo right this is called necton this tangle is called senna and we have given a touch of flux and henna drums right so these are the tangles that we used today so you can always try a different combination right try out different combinations use the idea and try different things yeah i shall see you again till then have a good time bye bye